Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Eberhardt and I'm on Tethered's uh, staff. And give you a little brief bio of myself. Uh, I've been hunting out of a saddle probably longer than anybody else in the country. Uh, started hunting out of a saddle exclusively when I'm hunting out of trees in 1981. So I've hunted 40 seasons out of a saddle and I've taken uh, 50 bucks that uh, qualify for the record book plus a lot of other a lot of other smaller bucks two and a half and three and a half year olds and a lot of does and stuff um, so I've been doing this a long long time I helped trophy line design their ambush saddle I was kind of under contract with them actually uh, had a little bit to do with new tribe and a couple of saddles uh, they came out with but they were all single panel saddles and I'm not a big fan of single panel saddles and obviously tethered has the mantis uh, Phantom and this year the Menace which is their new price point awesome saddles uh, but I'm a two panel guy you know two panels you just have a lot more versatility and um, it's just something that I like better I like being able to adjust everything whenever I want and whatever the hunting situation qualifies for so I'm gonna kind of show you what what I have tethered it's sold under tethered it's called Eberhardt signature saddle uh, they kind of wanted me to be on their team because I've been doing this for so many dang years and I've written several books. I've got a chapter in each one of my books on saddle hunting. Um, so I, I Greg, Greg Godfrey actually nicknamed me the godfather of saddle hunting and he's one of the owners of uh, Tethered. But uh, anyway, this is the box it comes in. It says Eberhardt Signature Saddle. They're designing a new box. It's going to come... Uh, it's going to come as a saddle by itself. It's also going to come as a kit. And when it comes in the kit, it's going to come with a 11 millimeter, it's called a lineman rope, which is basically your safety rope. It has a carabiner on each end. Well, it has a carabiner on the loop end. And then it's also got another carabiner on a Prusik knot, which is basically you hook this to your lineman loop on one side, throw it around the tree. You adjust this rope as you climb, descend, and uh, ascend and descend the tree. And then it will also come with an 11 millimeter tree tether. Now the tree tether also comes with a Prusik knot with the carabiner. And I've taken that Prusik knot off and I've actually bought one of the rope mans from tether. So the rope man is just a lot quicker adjust. With the rope man you can adjust it instantly. With the tree, with the Prusik knot, you physically, once you put your weight in it, it kind of binds on the rope, the knot binds on the rope. Anytime you got fabric to fabric, it binds. Um, so it binds on the rope. So to adjust it, you actually have to fidget with it for a couple seconds to slide it up and down the rope to adjust your, to adjust your drape. And to me, that takes too long. It still works, but you just, it just takes a little bit longer to do that stuff. So anyway, when you buy the kit, it comes with both the tree tether as well as the lineman rope with all the carabiners and the Prusik knots. And then the saddle itself is quite unique. There's no other saddle on the market like this that I'm aware of, I should say. Uh, and this is basically a modified version of what I've been hunting out of for 40 years. Uh, and again, I've helped design several single panel saddles, uh, hunted out of them a few times, just don't care for them. I just don't care for a seat being the seat. With the single panel saddle, once you buy the seat, it is the depth it is. You can adjust it, and I like to adjust my seat. So this is a two panel saddle. It has an adjustable bridge. This right here is the bridge. That's called the bridge. Now I have mine adjusted to 16 inches. So it's 16 inches from D ring to D ring, and that's where I'm gonna leave it. Once you find your sweet spot on your bridge length, you pretty much leave it in that spot. So my, my sweet spot is 16 inches. It also comes with leg straps, and these are strictly for safety, safety purposes. And these leg straps come off the inside panel, and they come up here, and they are actually connected to these little leg loops, which are attached to each one of these aluminum D-rings. So those, once you put them on, once you get in your saddle at the base of the tree to climb up the tree, those pull up between your legs and hook onto one on each side. 
and they remain loose all the time. You never tighten those. You never want them to put any pressure on your inner thigh or your femur artery. Those hang loose. Those are just safety features. Probably the biggest deal with this two-panel saddle over any other two-panel saddle, and there are other two-panel saddles out there, are these aluminum D-rings. Just like I mentioned with the Prusik knot binding on the rope, when you put pressure on it, when you put your weight in it, anytime you have fabric or a rope bridge and you have fabric bridged loops, which are basically very similar to these lineman loops, fabric lineman loops, as soon as you put your weight in the seat, the fabric or the rope on the bridge binds to that fabric bridge loop. So when you adjust your seat, you have to manually adjust your bridge on your bridge loops to cup to have the saddle cup up underneath your butt. With this one, it just automatically slides into place. I don't care how much weight you put on this thing, as soon as you adjust these panels to whatever depth of seat you want, uh, it automatically slides into the correct position to uh, center your weight distribution in the saddle. And again, it has two paddle, two two panels. Each panel is six inches wide. Each panel has cross braces. You have an inner panel and you have an outer panel. The outer panel is the panel that has the bridge or the lineman loops on it. And it also has the mollies on it that you can attach pouches to. And the outer panel, on the inside of the outer panel, it also has your weight bearing waist belt. And it has an adjustment buckle, that, a quick attach uh, adjustment buckle for adjusting that. So with the two panel, what's really unique about pretty much all two panel saddles actually, one thing that is common among them is your inner panel always stays under your butt. And that's a big, big deal. Because when you're hunting in a, at least all of the saddles I've hunted from, the Phantom is probably the only exception. Uh, when you adjust how, how you're sitting in a single panel saddle or when you fidget, it tends to climb up. They tend to climb up into your lower back. And because it's a one piece unit, when it climbs up in your back, obviously it's pulling the bottom of the saddle up from your underneath your butt. So you're constantly, probably every five to 10 minutes, lifting your weight up and pulling it back under your butt. And that really gets to be a pain and it's not that comfortable. That's why you see a lot of saddles with these little side adjusters, single panel saddles, they have these little side adjusters to try and keep that saddle, the bottom of that saddle cupped under your butt so it doesn't climb. Well, with a two panel saddle, you never have to worry about that because this panel stays under your butt all the time and the outer panel is the only one you adjust. So when I'm hunting, I typically like to have panels pretty much overlapped, maybe about these are six inch wide panels. I like to have it about nine inches. Uh, sometimes I like even totally overlap them and have them six inches. But you can make them 12 inches. You can have them just touching each other. Um, you can have them, you can have the outer panel halfway up your back if you want to take a nap in the morning, which I do a lot. If I get in the tree way before daylight, I'll go to sleep. I'll just raise the outer panel up into my lower back and, you know, roll my arms underneath the tree tether and lay on the tree tether and, and fall asleep because I got a lot of back support and plus the inner panel is under my butt. Once I wake up to, go, to actually physically hunt, I'll pull my weight forward and I'll take that outer panel and I'll slide it down over top of my inner panel to however deep I want that seat. Another cool thing about a two panel saddle, especially for new guys, this is really important. If you're a new hunter into saddle hunting, you're usually going to want the seat to be a little bit deep because it makes you feel more comfortable because you've never sat in a saddle before in a hunting situation. So, you know, when you let go of the rope and you're facing the tree and you've got all that weight on your rope, you know, you, you want a saddle that's going to cup your entire butt probably up to your waist. So you're going to want a 12 or maybe a 14 inch deep saddle when you first start hunting. The more you hunt, the more you're going to find out the higher you have the top of your saddle, whether it be the outer panel on a two 
panel or the top the top of a single panel saddle, the higher that goes up into your waist, the more it cuts down on your waist mobility to twist and shoot behind you or just to spin around at the waist. It kind of locks your upper body to your lower body if that gets up too high. So that's a big deal. So as a new user, you want you typically are going to want a saddle that's going to come up to where a belt would be on a pair of pants. You're going to want that seat a little deeper. But the more you hunt out of it, you're going to find you want to shallow that seat up to have that upper body mobility to be able to spin. And basically all you need, the only thing really that's holding your weight is what's underneath the butt. So by shallowing up that seat, it gives you a lot more versatility to swing around, change your clothes while you're in the saddle because, you know, you can untuck your clothes and put on layers or take layers off, put them in your pack, tuck everything back in and tighten your belt back up. You can just do a lot more stuff with a two panel saddle. And they're a lot more comfortable. Consider this, when you have, when you have a single panel saddle, what you have is you have a strap at the top of the of single panel and you have a strap, two inch strap at the bottom of the single panel and usually you've got some form of mesh or fabric in the middle. So basically, your only two weight-bearing straps are at the top, which you really can't feel that much, and at the bottom, which is the one that's right underneath the cheeks of your butt. So that's carrying the majority of the weight of the saddle. With a two-panel, if you so desire, you can have these panels so they're just touching each other, like that. So you've got eight inches of strap. Basically, there's four two-inch wide straps cupping your butt so you got a lot of solid weight bearing load strap and that makes it a lot more comfortable also with a two panel if you do have hip pinch you can actually separate the panels to where one panel is coming down under your butt and the other panel is up a little higher and there's a gap right here at your hip bone so you can make that gap at your hip bone so it's not pinching your hips um, what else have we got? Another unique thing about these D-rings is they have these slots underneath the D-rings and that's where the actual saddle panels are connected because it's one continuous seat, it's one continuous strap. So when you are adjusting these, you can make, you know, you can make the inner panel shorter than the outer panel because if the outer panel is going to be up, up your back a little bit, you're going to need more of it as opposed to right here underneath your butt. So because these panels slide in this slot under this D-ring, you can make one panel longer than the other or vice versa. Uh, now all, all saddles have alignment loops. Alignment loops, alignment loop. Uh, that's just there, you know, to put your alignment rope on when you're climbing and descending trees. Uh, another unique thing about this two panel saddle over all other two panel saddles, all the other two panel saddles have some form of fabric or mesh over top of the panels. Basically, these are covered, these are covered in some sort of a fabric. I don't understand that at all. We actually, when I say we, Ernie and I, when we were working on designing this, um, it, even though it's close to what I've used for 40 years, our original one had a mesh panel over top of the actual fat, over top of these straps. I tried it, I hated it. I didn't like it at all, and you wanna know why? Very simple reason. When you have fabric over top of your panels, and you've got your weight in them, when you wanna reach down and adjust your panels, with with the fabric over top of the panel, you physically have to take your thumb and your index finger and reach inside of the panel and pinch pinch that fabric to pull that up. Or you have to reach under your butt or wherever the bottom of that outer panel is and pinch that to pull it down. With this style, with this open, open strapping like this, all you've got to do is reach back underneath stick your index finger underneath that outer outer strap and just lift it up it's so much faster you just reach under it to slide that up or if you want to take it down you just take your thumb 
put it underneath the bottom, put it over top of the bottom strap and just push it and lift your weight up a little bit and slide it down. Uh, so it's much, much easier to adjust. Uh, and I did see another saddle that kind of blew me away. And it had, it had the fabric over top of the panels, just like the other ones I'm talking about. But it actually had three connector straps that were about that long, and each one of them had a buckle in it that connected the two panels. That I totally don't get, <laughs> because basically I, I, I sat in one of those. I actually, had, I actually had somebody show me one of those. And you have to have those straps adjusted the same. So if you want to adjust anything, you got to keep in mind, you got to adjust all three of those straps the same. That's pretty hard to do when you're hunting. And, but the biggest reason to me was if you take and you over, let's say the panels were still six inches wide, just like this one is. If you take and you want to overlap your panels, you had to, you had to lengthen those straps out six inches each. So each strap had to be six inches so you could fold the outer panel underneath the inner panel. And then as soon as you did that, now you got a buckle underneath your butt. You got three buckles underneath your butt and you can feel them when you sit in it. So that thing is not designed for totally overlapping the panels because you can feel those, those uh, buckles through, through the actual saddle itself. Now I will say this, when the buck, anytime the straps were, the, or the panels were outside of each other, as long as it was farther out than the width of the buckle, which was probably an inch and a half, it was comfortable. So as long as you kept that seat, see you'd have six inches, six inches plus an inch and a half, so you'd have, as long as you kept it 13 and a half, 14 inches wide or deep, you were okay and you couldn't feel the buckles. But as soon as you shallowed it up any shallower than that, you could feel those buckles underneath your butt. So everything on this ESS, that's what we call it, it's Ebrard Signature Saddle, ESS for short, Everything on this thing has a function. The D-rings have a very, a very strong function and purpose, in my opinion, because they self-adjust with the bridge. Uh, the panel's not being covered. That's for a very specific reason. It's much, much easier to adjust. Uh, I would never ever consider putting connector straps between the two panels, because to me that's totally ridiculous. Um, also, have, you know, Waist belts, just like every other waist belt, lineman loops are lineman loops, all saddles have those, leg straps are leg straps, all saddles have those. Um, so, you know, it, it, has all, it has all of the features. It's passed all the 300 pound TMA drop tests. So uh, that's, that's another thing you gotta think about for, you know, safety, safety purposes. Cause a lot of times all this fabric and stuff, it's gonna be weight bearing enough. You know, these straps are three or 4,000 pound tests and a lot of this stuff is way overloaded as far as the weight of the actual material and fabric. But that doesn't mean it's stitched properly. The stitching in this thing is what holds your life. So for all you guys that have had boats and had, you know, you go, go to a mass merchant, you buy a inexpensive boat cover, put it on your boat for three or four summers and the thread rots away because it's out in the weather. Well, you're hunting in the weather. Uh, you know, so stitching makes a big difference. So all that little minor stuff that Tethered definitely watches and takes care of and thinks about for few, for long-term use, some companies may not. So it's pretty important to know when you're buying something that it's passed all the safety tests. Liability insurance probably adds another $10 cost to every single saddle and Tethered has that. So I consider this to be the Cadillac of all saddles. And again, nobody, there isn't anybody on the face of the earth that has taken more book bucks out of a saddle than I have. And I don't think there's anybody else that's hunted 40 years out of a saddle like I have. So, uh, you know, I've tried them all. I've tried the rest and this is the best. Um, it is a two panel. So two panels do take a little bit more to get used to. I will admit that because it's two panels. It takes 10 more minutes to get comfortable with, but 10 minutes is not that big a deal. Um, but the versatility, the comfort, adjustability, the added upper body mobility when you shallow the seat up, 
the sliding on the D-rings, the bridge strap, self-adjust. Self you never have to worry about the saddle climbing up. Uh, those are all those are all pretty dang big deals. Uh, cost on this saddle is going to be 189, 199, someplace in there, just for the saddle itself. And as a kit, it's going to be around 300. dollars That's with both tree tether, lineman rope, and the carabiners. Uh, and keep this in mind, when you buy one saddle, that's what you're going to hunt out of for the rest of your life. Up until this, you know, because this has some features on it that mine, my old modified one does not have, safety features, but I've used the same saddle since 1981. So I used that for 38 seasons, and I could still use it now. I mean, it's perfectly fine. So, you know, what do you think of the idea of being able to hunt damn near any tree? Because you can get in just about any tree with a saddle. I don't care if it's crooked, I don't care how big it is, I don't care how small it is. Uh, you can get in just about any dang tree and you can prep a hundred trees if you want. Because your saddle is going to be with you all the time. You don't have to have a stand for every tree. You can prep as many trees as you want on private property, public land, or whatever. And you can go to any one of them at any time and hunt them. So you have a lot more opportunities of trees to hunt. You don't have to have a stand for every tree. You can shoot 360 around every tree. The, the list goes on and on and on about the advantages of saddle hunting. So I, I, not anything to do with ESS, but just saddle hunting in general gives you far more advantages than any conventional type of stand would ever give you. So uh, give it a shot. I do want to also show you how to properly get in a saddle, and I guess for that I need to get rid of this. So, this is the ESS. First thing you want to do is grab, take the bridge strap. I would, first of all, adjust it probably 18 inches. I'd start at 18, possibly 20 inches between D-ring to D-ring. The length of this strap, adjust it that way. And then once you get it that adjusted, I would also probably take my waist belt, your waist belt, and I would try to make these pieces, the, the male and the female end, both about the same length, because you're going to put that on at some point. And a lot of times when you buy them, one side will be really short, and it's hard to put it on and get it adjusted. So adjust those out so they're about both about the same length. And you may want to also extend your buckles on your leg straps all the way close to the end so they'll easily come up between your legs and hook on but anyway this is this is an ESS and typically because there's a lot more weight on the outer panel the inner panel rides up so have your leg strap sticking out the front have your waist belt unbuckled hanging out the back and then take your hand your other hand and just stick it in here and pull this inner panel down so that it's overlapping, evenly overlapping that outer panel. Then just grab right below the D-rings, just like that, and separate the two D-rings, and now you're gonna have a big gap. So right where that gap is, you just step through, and keep those panels overlapped, and then you just slide it up to your waist, and you try to find your male and female ends here, And there you go. That's it. You just put those together and tighten that up. And because the outer panel is overlapping the inner panel and the belt is on the outer panel, as soon as you tighten that outer panel, it locks the inner panel in place. Now I have talked to guys that have had some issues. They don't like this hanging here. Now obviously this is 16 inches because that's what I like. But if you got it 18, 20, 24 inches, some guys like a long bridge. I don't. You know, it's going to be hanging down here and it might hook your knees when you're walking if you're wearing it from your vehicle to your tree. I don't. I keep it in my pack. I put it on at the base of the tree. But if that's an issue, this does not come with the saddle. But this is a $2.49 bungee strap. You can buy these any place. You can buy them at a dollar store, any general store, tractor supply, Walmart, any place. Uh, and it's basically a 24 inch bungee, round elastic, not the rubber ones and it has plastic coated or 
just plastic hooks on it. So if you don't like this stuff hanging, you just take one of these, hook it to that, wrap it around and hook it to your bridge. To, I'm not, I'm sorry, hook it to one of your lineman loops on the other side. Now you can still use this lineman loop. You know, if you're standing at the base of the tree, you wanna go up the tree with it, you can still hook your lineman carabiner to this, run it around the tree and go up the tree. You know, while this is still on. And then once you get up the tree, you hook up your tree tether, then you disattach your line, you know, you're gonna have to, basically once you hook up your tree tether, you're gonna wanna hook it to this bridge. So you're gonna take off that bungee strap. And then you disattach the other thing. And then what I usually do is I will unbuckle the buckle, slide this underneath my butt. And now that's, that right there is about how I like to sit. I hope you can see that. I like to sit with the panels just barely touching each other. So I got a 12 inch seat there. Or if it's early season and I don't have a lot of clothes on, I'll overlap them. So I got probably about a nine or a 10 inch seat. And then there's sometimes where I, I totally will overlap them. So I got a six inch seat. It's just covering the bottom of my butt. And then when I'm getting in a tree early in the morning and I want to go to sleep, I'll pull this sucker up up into here and I'm gonna be hooked to my tree tether right here and I'll wrap my arms around my tree tether so I don't jerk off to the sides. And then I'll just wrap my arms around it and I'll lean on it and fall asleep. And this gives me back support, kind of like a recliner on a lot of the single panels. The only difference with, they're coming out with a lot of single panel saddles now that actually have a recliner at the top so they're trying to replicate a two panel saddle. But they don't understand that the single panel is still your butt seat. So that butt seat is still gonna start riding up and it's still gonna have to be pulled back underneath because that's your seat. And when the top rides up, the bottom rides up. It all rides up together. So with this, this always stays under your butt all the time. It never ever moves unless you physically move it yourself. So this is really versatile. See how I stick my finger, my thumb under there to move that. If you had fabric over top of that panel, you have to reach down here, grab it and pinch it to pull it down. With this one, with the open strapping, you just slide your thumb underneath there and pull it down or vice versa. If you wanna pull it up, you just stick your index finger underneath it and pull it up. You don't have to grab it and pinch it. Because a lot of times when you got a lot of clothes on, they're all bound up back there and it's hard to reach inside of it to grab that and pinch it as opposed to just sticking your finger underneath this one of the straps and pulling it up or pushing it down. So anyway, that's a two panel saddle. Keep in mind, newbies can have this as deep as they want to feel comfortable and the more you hunt, the shallower you're gonna make that seat. To me, the shallower the seat, the more comfortable it is. Thank you for your time. Okay, I'm up in this uh, popple, cottonwood, I guess. And uh, this, is, this is a big diameter tree. This is kind of about the size I like to hunt from, actually. And I just wanted to kind of show you, I went through all the perks of an ESS, Eberhardt Signature Saddle, um, as far as the bridge sliding on these D-rings. You couldn't do that. There's no way you could do that with a bridge and a fabric bridge loop. Um, but anyway, rides on that, self-adjusts. Uh, I'm a big Rope Man fan because it's quick adjust. To adjust you just do that or pull on that and let some out it's so fast it's much much faster than a prusik knot but anyway once you get up here as you can see i used my uh lineman rope to get up here but i just left it hooked up because this is just a demo uh, but now that i'm up here i'm hooked up to my tether i hooked i tied a girth hitch up here so it's not going to slide and the cool thing about an ess is you can adjust it now when I came up the tree, I had both panels behind my back overlapped and I was hooked to the lineman rope. Once I get up here, I hook up the tree tether, hook it to the bridge, and then I slid the two panels under my butt, keeping them overlapped, and then I disattached the carabiner from the lineman loop over here and it's just dangling over here. So anyway, when you're in a hunting situation, uh, you know, when, when you're sitting there to hunt, you can have it over, you can have your panels overlap like this I can adjust it like that that's going to be about 
way that feels, it's about a nine inch seat probably. They're slightly overlapped. I can pull it up into my back, pull it up to my waist. You know, new users are probably gonna use it about like this. That, the top of this outer panel is just about where your belt would be on a pair of pants. Um, and then if you're gonna, you know, a lot of times when I get in a tree early in the morning, you know, I go to sleep, I'll pull this way up, up into here, up, up into my back. And another cool thing about this particular two panel saddle is these, these, these uh, panels work independently of each other. So they slide, even though it's one continuous piece, they're two separate panels and they slide through these aluminum slots. So if you move this up into your back, this outer panel that's just gonna be up in your back, which is the outer panel is the only one you adjust. The inner panel always stays under your butt, always. You don't have to move that at all. But when you pull this up into your back, that strap may end up being longer than the inner panel that's underneath your butt or whatever the situation may be, these panels can slide through here and make them different lengths to whatever they need to be to however you adjust it. So the versatility is awesome. And when I mentioned the part about panels being covered up with a mesh or a fabric, when you, to adjust it, you literally have to stick your thumb inside, reach down and pinch it, pinch the fabric and pull it up or down. With this, you can just take your index finger, slide it underneath the panel, and pull it up. That's why I don't cover the panels. We covered them initially. I didn't like them at all because it took longer. Anything that takes longer and is not advantageous to killing something, I don't care to do it. I don't care what it looks like cosmetically. Cosmetics mean nothing to me when I'm hunting, and they shouldn't to you either. To move the panels down, you just take your thumb, Stick them underneath the bottom strap of the outer panel. Slide them down to wherever you want them. It's really simple. It takes literally a couple seconds to adjust the seat however you want it. And again, it's very comfortable because you've got all of these weight-bearing two-inch wide straps cradling your butt. With a single panel saddle, you've got a two-inch wide strap underneath the cheeks of your butt, and then you've got a two-inch wide panel up here. So this one down here is carrying all the load and that becomes a stress point. When you've got basically four two inch straps and they're all doing the same support, you've got a lot of support. And also with a single panel saddle, because it's one particular seat depth that never changes, if it starts climbing up into your lower back, the bottom's coming up with it. So you're always finding yourself lifting your weight up a little bit, and pulling it back under your butt. With a two panel saddle, Basically anybody's two panel saddle, you don't have to pull it back under your butt. It, this inner panel, this panel right here, this bottom panel always stays tucked under your butt. It never moves. It rides totally independently of this outer one. So if this outer one did climb a little, it's not gonna affect the inner because it rides independently of each other. But anyway, that is that is how easy it is to adjust your seat. However you want it. You just grab between your Prusik knot or your rope man carabiner and where it's tied to the tree, lift up on your weight a little bit and slide it underneath your butt or separate these panels. And also when I'm hunting, I like to sit, if I'm, when I'm actually hunting, I like to sit about like this. I like to sit with my knees slightly straddling the tree, especially a tree of this size. And I have hardly any weight in my feet whatsoever. I mean, there's nothing there. You can see how easy I'm moving my foot. All my weight's in my butt. That's why there's a seat. It's designed to sit in. It's not designed, you know, I watch all these YouTube videos and everybody's standing up like this. They got their legs straightened out and standing on the front of a platform or standing on steps or whatever, and their legs are straight. It's not designed for that. Designed to be in a sitting position so you can be comfortable all day long. I hear all the people complaining about, well, there's a lot of pressure on my foot. That step hurts or this does this. Put your weight in your butt. You got a chair. Sit in it. And it's just so simple when you got steps around the tree to move around and shoot in any direction. Use a tree as a blocker. If I was... If you're the, 
a deer at the camera, I would just hide behind the tree like this. If you're coming over on that side of the tree, I'm not gonna spin around 180 degrees to shoot. What I'm gonna do is you move over there, I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna take that shot. Here's my bow hanger, I'm gonna take that shot right there. Now, this is a prototype tree. Uh, if I was prepping this tree to hunt, I would have actually put these steps up a little higher. I'm a little too low in this crotch. Uh, you know, I just didn't give myself quite enough room. I should have, my butt, instead of being here, should have been up out up into here, about another foot higher. So the steps should be up about another foot. That way I could move through this crotch without having to worry about my butt touching on this other, other trunk. But anyway, uh, that's how simple an ESS is. So don't, uh, I don't know what you shouldn't do, but I think you should definitely try an ESS because uh, two panel saddles are definitely more comfortable, more versatile, more mobile, and the adjustability, everything on this thing is adjustable. It's not cosmetically attractive, but it's extremely functional. Thanks for watching another episode of Eberhard Outdoors and please like and subscribe.